Welcome one and all. I am Deborah. Miss Barrow. Miss Barrow's daughter. I live in the US. So for those of you who don't know, I would like to welcome Reverend Sister Placid from, from Mount on. Elvin Baptist Church. She was a dear friend of my mom. Ever since I've been a teenager growing up, everything is Miss Placid, Sister Placid. So I'm glad to have you and your team here tonight. Before we continue, I'd like to invite my Aunt Hazlan to open the prayer. My brothers and sisters, if you're able, could you please stand with me? Let us go before the Lord, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's really an honor to stand in your presence this evening and bless your holy name because we recognize you as the sovereign God. Yes. The God who reigns omnipotence. The God who reigns omniscient. Father, we bless your holy name because you have been our provider. You have been our shelter. You have been the solid rock on which we stand. Amen. Father, it seems odd this evening, the reason we are here this evening, right. that we are standing, oh God, worshiping you, having fellowship, oh God, on behalf of someone who is so dear to us. Lord God, this evening, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would create your anointing upon us, O oh God, that would bring us comfort, Lord, that would bring us peace, Lord, that would bring us hope, O oh God. Father, we continue to serve you, to see you as the one true God, the God who is able to, to wrap his arms around us and just love us, O oh God. And so, God, we leave everything in your capable hands. And we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
glory and all the honor and all the praise. Right, so I'm not speaking with this because it sounds very weird. <laughs> so we're here to give God all the glory and honor and all the praise. And we're here to give to thank Him for the life of Auntie Justin. And we all know how much she loves praise and worship. Amen. So we are here Amen. to praise Him and to glorify Him in her honor and in her glory. Amen. Yeah. We, we are going
and I desire to follow Jesus. No turning back. I desire to follow Jesus.
Your mic is off. In spite off. of everything. In spite of everything. And I'm seeing and I'm thinking. Um, maybe I'm so hurt. And I know it's sudden and everybody will tell us. You know, it's just my life, the suddenness. But I know that I am not the only one Haiti. My sister loved everyone and everyone loved her. And from all across, every color, class, creed, you name it, that was my sister. And even though sometimes we used to say, please be home more, you know. And then I was saying to them that when Jesse called and she said that she wasn't feeling well. And this was a week ago and he sort of left a note saying that Justin wasn't feeling well, she was, wasn't breathing well and she said, and he had come rushing with a nebulizer and as Dian rushing into the yard, just in this how they're going with a car. I'm leaving there, leaving there. I'm not going to get it. That is who she was. That is who she was. And, um, and I am sure, I mean, last night we had those here and, you know, we all do testimonies and stuff, but our testimony today is all about Justin. This is Barrow. And so I know that there's some of you here who have some special story. And now is the time, because you know somebody like Jesse, when they have a funeral like Jesse, you know, we ain't gonna have much to see. Because you know, oh, the big guy is gonna be there, because she deserves it too. And so now is your moment, now is your time to, you know, if you want to say something, including her sisters. I know it's hard on, on, on us, especially just five months after we lost her sister Shirley. And, um, you know, we're still trying to grieve from losing Mama. And it's like a storm after storm after storm, you know. And um, but we're going to stay in the boat with Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's where we're going to stay. And so the, you have now this opportunity to come and say something about your friend. Not my sister, your friend. We leave Sister Placid to kind of like for last, you know, but um, so those of us here. You want to ask them to keep it short so that we yes. have a number of people. Yes, Good night, everyone. Good night. I met Justin Bauer in 1969 when both of us were chosen to go to Nakuma Teachers College. But I'm not from the South, and my husband was transferred from his work to come down here, so I was just in San Fernando for two years. So when I was saying that, I knew absolutely nobody. But Nakuma had a system where they had initiation. And to me it was some of the things they were asking us to do was I found very degrading and I decided I'm not doing it. And one of the teachers who was was the prefect for, for, for us first year, she gave an order that nobody must talk to Will Stephen. Nobody must talk to Will Stephen because which is not taking any instructions. Okay, let it be so. So, this Justin Barrow came to me, I remember I knew nobody, but like she had already known everybody. In, 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 in. And she said, Yeah, don't bother with them. They can't tell me who I must go to. <laughs> but here now, take the initiation now. I said, No. There are some things I will do, but some things I will not do. But she remained a friend with me all through the, 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 the session. And that is how Byron and I became inseparable, I have to say. Because remember, I'm not, I wasn't from the south, and my whole family was in north. So I really didn't know anybody down here. But she has been a friend that was in 19... 69 to 71 training college students. So she has remained a friend, a counselor, a sister for all these years. And I 
since since Justin died, I don't know how I'm existing to tell you the truth. I don't know how I'm going about doing anything. But I want to relate. It is not long. I want to relate an incident. Now we meet every Saturday morning for prayers. To pray for the church, pray for the Sunday morning. And Saturday, not this Saturday morning, the Saturday before. When we met, we prayed and, and usually we talk and discuss the scripture. She said, you know, I have something to share with you. She was also complaining that she was not sleeping well. You will be talking to Justin, and the next thing you know, but if only here, yeah, that's no way. <laughs> and you will say, Justin, Justin. Oh, yes. So she was also taking a little nap. So she turned and she said, you know, I was in my bed, but she was always complaining that she was not sleeping well. And when I turned, I saw two ladies sitting at the foot of my bed. They were saying nothing to me, and I said nothing to them. So one of the ladies said, you didn't ask them anything? She said, no. I just sat there and I watching them, and they watching me. <laughs> I get up and went in the toilet, I came back, they still sit down there watching me, and I watching them, saying and doing nothing. And she called her prayer partner for the state and tell her, you know, two ladies just come and appear, and they sit in there, very quiet. And Sister Cameron said, you're not talking to them? She said, no, I ain't telling them anything, and they're not telling me anything. Eventually, I think it's just two children came into the room because like it was food in the morning and they just disappeared. Now, we are spiritual beings and we should have, the group I'm talking about, we should have taken that as some sort of signal. Afterwards, some sisters say it were two angels, some say it was Mama and Shirley that come. One sister said she believed that it was a message sent by the Lord to her to, to see how she she's operated. Because the doctor said, um, just to keep quiet, but I had a foreign word to her. <laughs> she, she couldn't understand that at all. Even when we, we in the group telling her, she got it vexed with us. What do you want me to do? I have to do this and I have to do that. We should have taken that as some are talking about the group. We afterwards we analyzed it. And we said, you know, if we had spoken about it with ourselves, we would have come up with something and we would not have been so devastated when Jocelyn collapsed and died. But we didn't do that, but that, as one of the sisters said, is a experience for us to know that sometimes you must not take experiences slightly. It was not a dream, she was not in a trance, it was something that happened. They came, sat on her bed, but they said nothing. Probably they came for her. Probably we don't know, but she has gone now. We are left here, and I just want to say we must be cognizant of things like these in our lives to know when God is trying to speak to us. Amen. 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 Okay, we need one more before we introduce and bring our brother and sister and um, anybody else. I just want to say okay. I remember going to camp with Miss Barrow. We went Lambo and Tobago. And our church joined with this um, St. Madeline Methodist Church and uh, so we went to, to help and uh, what always amazed me is how Miss Barrow remembers everybody's name the smallest child and she will remember the name and I remember one of the camp leaders came and said Jocelyn, you know the children them going and keeping out all the snacks and things that the people them bring she said but why these people should be doing that the children they had no training they should not be doing that. 
And when the lady gone, she said the damn light. I don't need it. Damn light. Only hiding up everything, hiding up everything. The children went and they mixing this. And some of the leaders complaining how the children mixing this. And you know, in the night they can't sleep. Ms. Barrow said, don't tell them I give you an Don't tell them that I give you an Ms. Barrow mixed a container with toothpaste and all powder and all kind of different things. She said, hide it good. She said, and now, don't make us follow. Don't go and tell them that I give a little piece and paste the tape. <laughs> To gather Christians, let's celebrate. And so we do that, and then I will hand over to number 82. Having the same love 
being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glories, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition, and took upon him the form of a servant, as was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Saints, for that scripture. So today we are here remembering Sister Jocelyn Gary. And I am sure that there are many here whose life Sister Gary has touched. Am I correct? Yes. So let me see her hand here. She would have touched many lives during her sojourn on earth. Anybody want to say how it touched, how it touched your life again? Has anyone again who just want to mention very briefly what Sister Baruch did for you that would have touched your life? So, all I put up on your hand and nobody wants to say that. I let you see but she will be for you. If she touched your life and you don't want to tell nobody, she can she what, what she will say? I'm, what did she will say? Between, between me and you, what do you think she's going to say now? She says, don't bother with them now. And she said, don't bother with them now. It's only until I do things for them. <laughs> she will have said say something like that. Yeah. Right? Because she touched her life and I let you put it quiet. I let you put it military secret. Alright. Alright. So tonight I just like to read one verse of scripture. And it's taken from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 13. And it's verse 34. And it reads thus <coughs> For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep. All right. Let me read that again. And instead of saying David, I'm going to say Joshua. All right. Acts chapter 13, verse 34. And this is the New Alan version. <laughs> and it says, For Jocelyn, after she had served her generation by the will of God, fell asleep. Yeah. With that song that gather Christian and let us celebrate. What are we celebrating? What are we celebrating? The life that Sister Barrow lived. And why is there a reason to celebrate that somebody dead and killed is celebrating? Because she touched many lives. And are you still, are you still quiet? Are you still quiet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. And Sister Barrow, we. I really like Sister Barrow to go back a long time because Sister Barrow, we were traveling officers together. When I say that, Sister Barrow, every fifth Sunday, 
sister, my own sister, myself. And I was just writing down the churches that we went together with Sister Baru. We went Point Portin. Yeah. We went Faisabad. Right. We went Monipo. Mm -hmm. St. Madeline. Mm -hmm. California. Yeah. Don't say Margaret to have a church there. What's the name of that place? Don't say Margaret again. Pleasant Spark. Pleasant Spark. San Fernando. And then we have a next special church. Has a capacity of about 10 people. Where's it? Where's that church? I never know. One, only call 10 people. I understand the 10 is 12. So make a class of me. Class of me, yeah. A class of me. Big, just big at the table. And so she carried us all over the place. And the purpose of going to all those places was to spread the word of God. You know, in, in life, we have history books written about all kinds of people. You'll find books about Dr. Eric Williams and about um, Robinson and all of these people. And they would have served their generation in a capacity in the political sphere. And Sister Baruchi served she was a teacher for many years. How many? Plenty two. Plenty two. Plenty two years. <laughs> yeah. She served her country in the capacity of a teacher for plenty two years. But that's not the only way she served, you know. She served her long until her death. And therefore, we now can say, as the scripture says, after she has served her generation, she fell asleep. And we know the Bible says that when Jesus went and saw the little girl that was dead, what did he tell them? She had dead, she said dead. But what did he tell? She said she took an arrest. The lady weary. She weary. And because she weary, God has said, Bao, you serve a generation. Thank you. Come on, let's leave that for the people who like to touch and who say nothing. <laughs> Leave it for them. Because when they're there, they might talk. <laughs> so I hope that I'll start talking now and let people know how bad we touch your life. Sister Baru is to bring people to our church to be baptized. She's to bring one and she says, Sister, Sister, I have an next one, you know? <laughs> And then she'll bring the next one. And I have an next I'm sure we have people like that here tonight. I have an next one. In the service of the Lord all the time. And Psalm 116 and verse 15, hear what that says. Precious. I don't know it or I don't know it. Well, what it says? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his seed. I don't know what precious means. Precious means of great value. I have this, this ring here. This is expensive stuff. Okay. This is genuine name. This is not gold gold. Okay. And the face of this ring fell out. It's an a, a opal stone. And it fell out. And that grieved me. You know why it grieved me? Because it was precious. And I had to go and put back in a next stone. And it cost me plenty of money to put back in a stone. Now, if it is costume jewelry like our sister there is wearing, <laughs> if that was, she just go and buy next one more for that. As a matter of fact, I can buy a whole box for you. <laughs> because it's not, it's not precious, it has no value. So when you lose things that have no value, it doesn't. When you lose things that have no value, it doesn't really bother you because it is a no value to get them time. I just, but when you hear it precious, it has hurt you back. They wrote me and took a chain for me. When I go and check the price of the chain, because the chain is a long time, eh? And at that time, I say, okay, let them go here. When I check it, $14,000, but it started to hurt me. And it hurt me, like months after, you know, it hurt me. Because it is precious, it is of value. And therefore, what is scripture is saying, precious in the sight, not in our sight, you know? But in the sight of who? 
The Lord is the debt of sin. So, sister, that means that a sin has value. A sin has value in the sight of the Lord. So we know tonight that the Lord is well pleased to receive Sister Baru. Amen? Amen. Well pleased because she was a saint in his sight and she was precious in the sight of the Lord. So she has served well, she has served her country well, and she has served her Lord well. But you know the thing about it? You can serve your country well and when you're dead. That is it, you know? No Lord, and no, and no, you have precious in the sight of your Lord. No? Because all that you would have done when you die, all of that good. I was telling her church that I buried my, well, I am very good, my father in you know, law recently, last week. And he did plenty things. But given our conversations, I don't know how precious in the sight of the Lord is that all. And everything that he would have done, burn up with him. All his achievements, that burn the same day he burn. All his credentials, all of that burn. And anything that you do, that you consider to be great, anything that you do, that is going to end when you end. At your demise, all of that gone too. So all the great men whose name is in history book and all kind of thing, all the history book going to burn up or not? Because the earth going to be destroyed by fire. And all of those achievements, all of those great things that all these great people do, all these cell phone, all these pretty things, all of these things, one day, will be of no more value. All the latest gadgets will be of no more value. All your big homes will be of no more value. All that you are laboring for now, if it is not for the Lord, it's going to come to a crashing end. And it is of no eternal value. Now, we ain't telling you don't go and build no big house. Now. But some people just build houses that are too big. I tell you that. Do not. I am joking. I am working in a house here now. The lady who owned the house is 67 years old. I got to go and hold her. I talked about just a few hours ago. Do you see me I'm tired and I come from her? Yes, so to carry her to the house, I have to hold her. And step by step by step. The house is 90 something feet long by 50 by 40 something feet wide. I also have four bedrooms. One woman, no husband, no children. And the house, I myself, I'm going to finish it. She must be spent about one and a half million dollars and must be have the same amount to spend again. That can make no sense. And it can make no sense on two grounds. One, it's too big for she. And secondly, somebody is going to get that. And at the end of the day, all of that that she did there comes to know. So I'm telling us here tonight, your big job, one day, that could come into know. Your big house, one day, that come into know. I have a Mercedes banner, and one day, <laughs> one day, that too, Come into North. Everything that we do that does not serve and have a purpose in the Lord is going to come crashing down and tongue's eyes zero. Zero zero. Let us live that when we die that the Lord is going to say precious. In my sight is this saint who is coming home. That is what we should be living for, that to hear, well done, don't go and faithful servant. Come, 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 come. What sense, the Bible says, what sense does it make if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? That doesn't make no sense. 
So brothers and sisters, tonight, preaching in work and preaching in funeral is not for the dead. It's not for the dead. Because whatever the dead done, did, done already. But the dead could carry something forward with them into eternal life. But we have to prepare the same effort that you're going to make to get your job. I ain't telling nobody don't go to school and be a fool. Enough. Go to school, be no fool, but be more no fool by serving the Lord. So that it could be said of you in a time like this. Because one day we're going to be in Olive Funeral and Olive Olive might be in my funeral. <laughs> the little children will be my funeral. Right? <laughs> right? So yeah, so one day, one day it will be you. You'll be the person you'll be talking about one day. And what will be said of you? Is it just going to be your intellectual accolades that will be spoken about? Some people feel so proud about that. My son is this and my daughter is this. I have been this and I have this degree. I have that degree. But as I said, all of them think good enough. But they're only good for a time. But there is something that is good for eternity. And that is what we are now preparing ourselves for. We are on this journey in preparation for eternity. And eternity is a very long time. Life, sister, I will live to be how much? 84 or something like that? 85. 85. 86 oh, in June. Can we fight here? One year? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, yes, 86 years. And to us, that's a very long time. But one day, that 86 years will look like nothing. You know? Because when it comes to eternity, it is not measured in time. And that is what we are preparing for. So your earthly rewards are going to last but a time. It says, will you be, ever hear the song? Will you be ready when the bridegroom come? Will you be ready whether morning, noon or night? Will your lamp be burning bright? Will you be ready when the bridegroom comes? Mm -hmm. That is talking the land. Let me say that again. That is talking the land. There are young fellows now walking around deciding to kill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that? Yes. Oh, you know that? Yes. Let's go to the TV They are walking around deciding to who to kill. And I say this over and over again. They tried to kill me last year. You know? They channel me last year. They come, they put a gun to my head. I, I see what kind of thing. <laughs> I see what kind of thing. And they take my chain, they take my money, they take what kind of thing. But I see what I did. <laughs> but you know what? God was on my side. Amen. Amen. But there are many who are not so fortunate. Yes. Just last week, a woman in she house, yes. leaving from a bedroom to go to somewhere, a bullet come through the window and kill a woman in she house. No, I mean, how, how, how unfortunate could that be? You minding your business, you're not in the street, and this thing come and find you in your house? I said that to say that there are unguarded moments I said that to say that the devil is having a field day. I said that to say that we must be in a constant state of readiness that should your number call, not a player number, not Paul and rat and cattle and pigeon and what again? What was that? What was that? You know what I'm saying? Oh, what was that? I don't play on the other one. I don't well know. What was for? What was that? What that? I don't know So, we're not talking about when that number called. When that number called, go, if you buy a ticket already, 
go and get money and stop playing. Right? <laughs> go and pick up your money and stop playing. But we are talking about that number. We're talking about when the number of your life is called. Will you be ready? How will you be formed? Will you be in a state where your soul will be transported? Or will you be in a state in a flux and have people wondering, boy, I wonder if you make it for you. Don't, 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 don't put your family through that stress. <laughs> don't put your family through that stress. And not only your family, but don't put yourself in danger of losing your soul. So brothers and sisters tonight, Sister Barrow, mm -hmm. after she had served a generation, mm -hmm. fell in sleep. Are you serving your generation? How are you serving your generation? What are the spiritual contributions that you are making to your generation? At the end of the day, how many people have you been trying to win to Christ? At the end of the day, what will be said of you when your time comes? Will it be said that she fell asleep after serving her generation? Will it be said of you, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of Alan? Will it be said, precious in the sight of the Lord will be? Let me call, let me make sure I'm telling nobody name me who I call never. Jehokim? I saw nobody in that. Will that be, will, will it be precious in the sight of the Lord? So let us, brothers and sisters, live that when our time comes, that we can say with confidence that they have served a generation and precious in the sight of the Lord. Is this sister precious in the sight of the Lord? Is this brother precious in the sight of the Lord? In short, get your house. Get your house in order. Amen. 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 And so before I ask Sister to say something, um, let's, you know, song book number 29, we're singing it so that the sing in heaven will hear you breathe, it's like faithfulness.
God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Okay. I greet you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in celebration of the life of one of my best friends, Sister Joycelyn Barrow. Now, it's a while. I have stopped doing wigs. I say, I don't do wigs. <laughs> but when it came to Sister Joycelyn Barrow, I had to weave that for the time. So the rest of you don't die for me to come. To you. <laughs> I will not come. But before I say anything, I want to extend an apology on behalf of my brother's naughty behavior. <laughs> so forgive him. <laughs> now, I used to preach, um, as he told you, on a fifth Sunday I am in the Methodist churches. And one Sunday, I carry Alan with me. And he had to I ask him to preach. And Sister Barrow said, yeah, uh, let him preach, let him preach, that's good, that's good. And when Alan preached, and the next fifth Sunday come, I hear young people saying, the man come. <laughs> So I almost preach myself oh, out of business <laughs> Alan along with me. Thank God. God is good. All the time. And uh, one of the best friends I've had was Sister Barrow. She was frank. She was open. She loved the Lord. So we had that in common. And through her, I got many other friends in the Methodist uh, circle. Um, Sister Barrow loved life. She lived. She didn't waste her life. She enjoyed her life. When it's time to cost, she costs. <laughs> So now when she finished, she said, Sister, God, you have to forgive me for this one. <laughs> so she deal it out and then she go back to God. She was a great woman. I say she was a politician in her own right. She was a pastor in her own right. I mean, um, she was poet and she loved people. But just as she loved people, when they had bad ways, she wasn't too patient with them. She wanted everybody to be good. And I remember she, she had a heart for the young people. One Sunday in the Methodist Church, St. Madeline, she started to um, pray for the children of the nation. And that woman was so grieved she prayed, she wept, and she asked the Lord, you know, to save the youth of the nation. And it was so touching that I never forgot it. And I'm going to preach so you don't have to worry. You can relax and just take in the next 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, the, the, what we, we had in common, many things, but the love for the Lord was one of them. And anybody that was really serving God, and as she felt they should be serving God, she was appreciative of that. Um, she used to call herself, when she's with us, I don't know when she was with you all, if she did it, she was a meth man. <laughs> she was a member. She was a member of St. Margaret Methodist Church and a member of Mount Elvin Baptist Church. And so um, we, we, we had that in common. What I admired with Sister Barrow, 
as you heard Alan say, uh, I don't know if he was right to say it or wrong, she used to bring people to get back nice and hot. <laughs> and she would bring them and lead them to understand the word and to get baptized and take them back to their church. <laughs> so don't fear when she bringing people to baptize Mom to help him. She bringing people for the membership. No, she bringing them for what she believed that they should have and uh, in exercising their faith in God. And I respected her for that. Sister Aru had a connection with God. She knew the God she served, and she served the God that she served well. Um, if you ask me if Sister Barrow wanted to die, I would say no. She did not want to die. She wanted to live. She loved life. And since her mother made a hundred, she said she was trying to see if she could have made the hundred too. She didn't make the hundred. But you know what? She didn't want to die, but she was ready to die. There's a big difference. She was ready to die. Whether it came morning, noon, or night, she was ready. Death did not find her unready. So that is why we can celebrate tonight because we know that Sister Barrow has gone to be with her Lord. I don't know if she will ask him why he took her so early. Only 87 years? Only 85 years? She might ask him that. And he would have said, you have lived your life. And you lived it to the full. So now enter into the joy of your Lord. And then he's going to say, But Jocelyn, did you know that in order for you to live on and on and on, you had to pass through death? And you just passed through that. And now, you know what, Jocelyn? There's no more death for you. And I'm sure that when the Lord has said that, he will say to her, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. She had a great faith. And um, something that, uh, a phrase that she used that I often use myself and quote it to others. Um, she believed in God. She believed that there was no one like God or that there was no one better than God. But she didn't say it in English, although she was a teacher. She used to say, yeah, man to beat God. <laughs> Sister Chu, yeah, man to beat God. And sometimes when, when we pray and, and we see the answer come and how God, I say, according to Baru, yeah, man to be God. If you say it in English, you're not going to have the same value. Because you see, yeah, man to be God. So she, she believed in God. She held on to God. She taught God. She, she lived a good life. And now tonight we celebrate. We celebrate Joycelyn. We celebrate Sister Baru. We celebrate our good friend. We celebrate a saint. We celebrate a worker. We celebrate a woman of God. We celebrate a friend. I celebrate a friend. I celebrate a worker. I celebrate someone who I was able to share with and who was able to share with me. So the rest of the 45 minutes I'm going to bring now. <laughs> Psalm 90. Psalm 90. What did Solomon say? Teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I remember once Alan preached a message 
ready or not, here I come. And uh, when we said, when I said that she didn't want to die, the other part of Solomon's will teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. She numbered her days. She knew her age. And she knew that any time God is ready for her, she's ready. So when that time came, she was ready. And the message she's leaving with us, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So if we live 80, and if we live 85, and if we live 100, we need to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So what do you think that verse means? Consider the time you have. Consider how you live. Consider so that you will know how to live it. When we consider that the years that we have, they are given by God. So whether they are great, many, or whether they are few, simple. When we consider that the life we have is God that has given it to us, we will know how to live it. So whether you want to die or you don't want to die, when death comes, you are ready. And none of us want to die, you know. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Ain't that funny? Because death is the transport to take us to heaven. And when I say nobody wants to die, and that may sound strange, but then if you don't want to die, why do you? If you want to die, why do you go to the doctor when you get sick? <laughs> Why do you fall out and say, Bring, uh, help me out here, look at fallen? If we wanted to die and we were um, bent on dying, then it means that when pain comes, when fire comes, anything that will bring death, you shouldn't run from it. And although we are celebrating that life here, we really, if anything threatens our life, you'll be surprised to see how people will scamper. <laughs> that everybody afraid. Nobody wants to die. And, then, and nearly dead, yes. <laughs> We're glad you get away. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to number our days, to live life right, to live life meaningfully, to live life trustingly, to live life knowing that if we live it with God, after this life comes the life, the eternal life. And I wish for all of us that we would be like Varro, not wanting to die, but being ready to die. Are you ready? Well, I don't want to die. Not now. I want to about how much I will say. I wouldn't tell you how much more. <laughs> but I am ready. I am ready to go. Because going is going to be really the fulfillment of why I came in the first place. So I want the Lord to teach me to number my days so that I will apply my heart unto wisdom so that I'll be able to live the days that I have and the days that I ask for and looking forward to, to live them meaningfully. So we bless God for Sister Joyce here. and we remember that I am man to be God because God is good and all the time God is good. Amen. Amen. I want to extend my condolences and my understanding to a point 
because we had a mother that died too. So we kind of know how you feel. But we, we uh, rejoice with you that you have that hope and the assurance that she is with the Lord and one day you'll see her again. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's put our hands together for Sister Valerie. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity just to share with you in this room. How great is our God. How great is His name. So she was the first child, and then she had these boys, boys, boys. And then she had this beautiful sister that came along. And uh, today's her birthday! And so, in, with all the joy, all the sadness, we have to celebrate my sister Evelyn, her birthday. It's been hard for her, she's the closest sister to Jocelyn, and they talk. They talk every day and quarrel every day. <laughs> so where is Evelyn? She, I mean, she can cough me up or book me up after this, but that's okay. Evelyn? Where is she? Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. She has so many other sisters, but we know this is her favorite, and we know why as close as she is, but I'm not going to say her age either. <laughs> so we say happy birthday for Evelyn, because Justin would want us to. <laughs> entrusted herself to you and now as she enters into another year I pray for her understanding I ask that you give her wisdom so that she would live this life 
meaningfully. I pray that your anointing will rest upon her. And I pray in the midst of what she's experiencing now, you're going to give her the joy. The joy of the Lord, which is the strength. We pray that what she is going through now, you will give her peace on the inside. And that your grace will be ministered to her in a way to show that I am man to be God. Amen. So Lord, I ask for that anointing upon this daughter. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Let's stand and sing. Great is the Lord.
this will not go in vain. Uh-huh. That we all will learn to remember our days that we will apply our hearts unto wisdom. That we are going to live this life in recognition that one day we too shall pass this way. So, Lord, I just pray tonight for your blessing on each and every one who are going to wait tonight. I pray that God is going to find root in each heart. And as we are about to leave this place, I just pray that you go with us, you will guide, protect us, and deliver us from all that is evil. Father, I this in Jesus Almighty. And we also pray that God for the family. Yes. The sisters, the children, all the relatives, all the friends. We pray that God that the time of grief will be short. Yes. And I pray that God that it will be grand in comfort. Mm-hmm. Knowing that Sister Baro has gone to give Amen. you. Amen. So we just continue to give you the more the praise or the honor and all the glory. For actually Jesus. Amen. 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 And the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We have a nice refreshment to you. We have some young men here Other friends said Clarine, who is um, had to travel to the States and, and here. But we want to say to Clarine, sisters, that sea and oh, we hope that I don't know. There you are. Thank you so much for your refreshments for us. I know I'm very hungry. Thank you. I say to Clarine, in here. She's watching on Facebook. Oh, wow. Thank you.